if there's one word that describes how I feel on a day-to-day -day basis, it's bored. And if you clicked on this video, you might be feeling a similar way. In today's day and age, we have infinite entertainment in the palm of our hands. Between social media apps and streaming services, you'd think that we'd have an easy cure to that uninspired feeling that we get regularly. So why are people feeling more bored today than ever before? The answer is simple, and it might not be something that you want to hear. Your phone is not the cure for your boredom. In fact, it's probably making it worse. A 2021 study conducted by the Royal Society for Open Science concluded that a 10% increase in self-reported boredom was associated with a 40% increase in smartphone usage. That is to say, any time that we feel even the slightest bit bored, we have an outsized tendency to whip out our phones. And I'm not going to act like I don't do this. I do this all the time. What's even more eye-opening about this study is that the results indicated a significant increase in boredom after phone usage. It's almost as if these apps that promise to entertain us are actually draining us. So here's the hard truth. We need to get back to basics here. We need hobbies. Hobbies are often thought of as activities for people that live quiet, relaxed lives. Typically, when somebody says the word hobby, we think of things like reading, cooking, photography, and only a handful of other activities. And I feel like most people that don't resonate with one of those top choices decide that having a hobby just isn't for them. And it's back to the scroll hole they go. Another reason that people don't pursue their unique interests is their fear that others will perceive it as uncool. And I think that's because often what people think is cool is just what they see other people doing. And nowadays, most people see others doing, well, a whole lot of nothing. So they might believe that by doing anything in their free time, that might be perceived as going against the grain. And at the end of the day, a lot of people just want to fit in. But here's what people get wrong about having a hobby. Firstly, a hobby can be anything. Do you like going to the beach in the summer? Guess what? That's a hobby. Do you like cleaning your apartment on the weekends? Guess what? Another hobby. Do you like telling your friends to subscribe to Forever Forward on YouTube? Well, first of all, thank you. But guess what? That's a hobby. And here's another newsflash for people that are afraid of being judged for what they like to do. People don't care at all. If a friend of yours has a real issue with you pursuing your interest in, say, basket weaving, then that's their problem. Because basket weaving is cool. Being good at anything is cool. Personally, I have an obsessive personality, so I find myself addicted to things for three to six months, and then I'll move on to something new when I inevitably lose interest. And that's not a bad thing. You don't need to commit to one hobby for your entire life the same way you don't need to commit to one woman for your entire marriage. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Let me give you some examples of hobbies that I've tried in the past. And if you ever tried any of these, let me know if you liked them. So first, I collected Funko Pops for two years. And some people think they're only made for little kids. Newsflash, dude. They're made for adults, too. But look, I would get fired up when a new one would come in the mail and I got to unbox it and throw it up on the shelf with the rest of them. During the pandemic, I told myself that I was going to learn to kickflip. So I bought a skateboard and just started riding it around Boston. First, I learned how to ollie and then I learned how to do a pop shove it. And then finally, I landed a kickflip. I ended up getting pretty bored of it after that, but it was an extremely fun few months. And now if somebody asked me to do a kickflip, I can do it. Next, I went down the rabbit hole of mechanical keyboards, which my wallet did not appreciate. Who would have thought there are so many different ways to build a keyboard with different switches and different layouts and different keycaps? It really is cool. And I got a chance to meet some awesome people in the mechanical keyboard subreddit. Here's a fun sound test of one of the keyboards I built in 2020. And lastly, I brought the kid out in me again and relearned how to play Yu-Gi-Oh. The game has evolved to an almost unrecognizable point since the playground days, but it's still pretty fun. My favorite part was discovering really unique cards to improve my decks. I never really got good at it, but I went to one tournament and met a bunch of awesome people. I'm still sitting on like hundreds of dollars worth of cards, and they're fun to look at for sure. Look, here's the point I'm trying to make with all this. We've entered an era where doing nothing in your free time has become the norm. When I was a kid, you never did nothing. You were always building a fort in the woods, or riding a bike, or playing with Nerf guns, but definitely not scrolling on your iPad. And we need to get back to those days. People's lives have become shallower and shallower as more of our lives have gone online. 
And that's a problem. We all need to fight that urge to whip out our phones during any semblance of downtime and replace that urge with some actual fun activities. And if you need ideas for things to try, here's three. Learn how to do a headstand. Teach yourself how to shuffle a deck of cards. See how many glasses of water you can chug in a minute. And that's it. Just start thinking of fun stuff in your head and then do it. And some stuff might be so fun that you want to keep doing it instead of pulling out your phone.